Uh, hello everyone, it's Chatham here. In this video, I want to share how I build the Quill Mines, my project, what I use for this. So basically, my tech stack. And I launched this project really quickly, and uh, I thought it's worth sharing my way of building an application really quickly. In the, for this project, uh, I used uh, Next.js, and I just want to show how it's all working, so, so you understand. So we have like a landing page, we click Get Started, we go to the login page, I added like a, two separate ways of uh, signing up or a login with the send magic link or uh, sign in with Google. So what is the idea the, is the project is just for the stu educators or for the students to get access to the some nice AI tools to help them study better, teach better. So let's say you want to generate a lesson plan. You can do this if you want to generate smart notes based on the based on the PDF file or something you can do this. So I, and I will also share quickly how it looks when you have some generation. So let's say you have you open some generation with some user with generations, and let's say like we clicked on the quiz, we see the quiz here. It can be like assessment, lesson plan, and other. So it looks like this. Also, you you spend tokens by complete by making the generations. So now let's discuss how it's all done. So we have the next JS application here. And we have the front and the back end. For the back end, we use the super base with the database. And we also use the authorization here. So this is why I choose the super base. It's just convenient way of like accessing having all the backend logic in the one service. Previously I also use the clerk, it's also good. It's a fast way to build the authorization, but I noticed that it's just too much services for me when you need to change, to check your users, to check your database queries or like database status. You need to change like two different services basically. I like this approach and it's not harder than using like a clerk or something like this. It works good for me. Also, it's like a super base free plan is enough. So I don't pay for the, for now, I don't pay for the super base at all. So the free plan is cover my usage, like fully cover my usage. And also for the database here, we use them, or it's, I think it's better to put a Samsung here. So for the database connections, we use the server actions. I mean, for the database queries, for database logic, we use the server actions as much as possible from next. Um, I like this way. I think it's much simpler than adding like a separate API backend workloads for, for like for every action, save some a lot of time. I liked it. And for the next JS yes, front end, we use Shatian plus Tailwind. I don't think I need too, too much explanation here. Everyone knows the Shatian pre-made foundational components that you can stylize, add to your application in a nice way, and just you have that nice foundation for the your App UI. Actually, nowadays I don't use Figma that much. It's more like start the project, initialize Shatian, design uh, in, in code, and then if you, as you have something nice that you like, just continue building on top of it. So it's just, I just work like this. And I put for Next.js also, like nowadays, almost all I build, I add like some AI capabilities, let's say AI chat, AI uh, generations, AI functionality. And for this, I use Virtual AI SDK. This is just simplified working with the AI functionality like so much, it's crazy. They have like a separate hooks for the completion and the for chat, which lets you build like your AI features quickly. It's basically just uh, abstractions on top of the API calls that you that you make to uh, OpenAI or other providers, but it's just simpler. And I nowadays I deploy everything on uh, Versal and I have like $20 uh, pro plan there uh, right now it's an app i deploy everything and everything for now stays on the free, free tire uh, i mean my pro plan tire so inside the 20 dollar uh, mark i don't pay like on top of this if it's going to be expensive it will become expensive i will share update and maybe i do i deploy somewhere else but for now this works really good for seamless deployment i just Add my GitHub repo, click deploy. In in like 99% of the cases, it's deployed without any like the the first uh, the first uh, try, without any issues. 
so definitely recommend this so now i want to show you, uh, show you in code how it's all done so first of all we will discuss this uh, login page and i will show you how it's done so we see, we see we have like two separate actions for the sign, sign in with Google and send magic link. So here, if we go to our login root, so we have the organizational folder here, we have sign in, sign up routes, we have the actions file with all the actions related to the to this particular route and the login page. I mean login component, I'm sorry. Login component is used on the sign up and the sign in route and we pass the mode here. If you'll go here. So we, depending on the mode, we show different uh, different um, fields for the input. But in this case, it's the same. So it will stay the same. And for the how it's all set up for the magic link action and for the Google sign in, it's just a form with the fields inside. We have some hidden fields to pass for the form to to pass with, together with form data. Here we pass in the price ID when the user choose the, the plan before clicking the uh, get started on the landing page. And also discount code for the special offers, if there are any. And then button, this is shut send button with some adding styling. And we see the loading indicator here. And how it looks, if we clock, uh, if for the magic link action, we use, use action state, it's, in, it's introduced in Next 15 and React 19. Right now it's the canon version, but uh, I think it should be stable, like like really soon. So you, by when watching this video, you might have also the, already the stable version of this. What is this? Is basically similar to use form status that we used before, but it can be done like in one component. Because we use um, form status, you need separate component to get the status of the to show the loading indicator, because you need like to be one component DAO to access the form. But here we can just pass the action, the server action, and the form data, and you can access the status. So if we go here, you see we are doing the error here, or success if it's sent correctly. So we can easily access the spending status here. Like we don't need some some additional logic to show the loading indicators. You just access the verbal that you get that you get from use action state and show it and show the loading indicator based on this and you can easily pass the error states here to catch the errors and show some error messages so let me show you also how i set up on the super base side i think this is for the shatian it's pretty straightforward you just add the components you use the shatian cli for this and your components stored in the ui folder you can stylize them how you like and then you import them and use it here like i do you just use the input and use the button you can add like a special buttons like I, I do here to, to stylize it like more or build a, a separate components. For the super base, it's, it's also really, um, really easy to do. We have the lib folder where we have like a three files. First of all, the client to use the super base client on the client server to use it on the server and the middleware. Uh, it's used in the, our middleware.ts file on the, sh on the next.js. And f from the middle where we just uh, export one function, it's it's update session, and this is f all from the docs. So you can just go there and copy the code. And how, why it's useful, you add this to the middleware here, somewhere in your logic. Here, you see, we called it like, at the end, it, it just update the session of the current, of the authenticated user. I also want to add a couple of words about server actions and how I structure my folders. So I used to create API routes for all my actions all my database queries and other right now i use the api folder order for the ai stuff to use the first personal ai sdk and also for the authentication and the callbacks like uh, webhooks and other so for all the actions that relate to the database queries i use the uh, server actions and how i structure this so i sometimes create a main folder with the features but it can be also done in the root folder right now i choose the features folder just for organizational purposes and now, right now, like based on the feature, let's say I, I want to build the generation features that's related to my generation. I have some components stored here and also actions stored here in the index file where I outline all my actions. And all the function here is going to be executed on the server and it's going to mainly fetch some data and send, send me back. So, and I also want to share how I build in the AI capabilities. And for this, we will go to the session 
generation list. For the list that I showed you before with the AI chat, in case you forgot, let me show you how it's, it looks inside the app. And we open the AI chat tab and we click send. We have like a nice AI chat. And how it looks like is basically, yeah, you see the tabs here. It's again, it's chat and tabs. Here we have the AI chat and all the chat logic is uh, done by using just one hook from the um, Versal AI SDK. You get the messages, you get the input, you get handle input change, handle submit, and and uh, all of this from use chat where you pass the API root. So this is why we need the API root in this case, because everything else is managed inside the actions folder. Because this hook need this, you need to pass the API API root uh, for, for in order for it to work. So you need to create the API, and I like I I used to add like a AI folder here. In this case, I have like a generate for, for other logic and the chat for this for this route. And here, yeah, you just add in the open AI, passing the messages that you get from the request automatically. And you just do two AI stream response. I don't know why it's market deprecated, but this works fine for me right now. So and you see it right here, it's it basically is done automatically. So you, ha you have the ha handle, uh, handle input change, handle submit, and the send button, and this button will send your messages automatically to the it basically and updates the state here. So you'll have the uh, you have access to messages. I hope you find this video useful. I try to explain my tech stack. Leave a comments what you think about this. Try it yourself, and I see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.